Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbucks here, and welcome to the second episode of the second season of this Wolverhampton Wanderers career mode. The first Premier League game of the season is upon us, and we've got a pretty decent and somewhat tough month in August to get things kicked off. Newcastle at home, Liverpool away, then Arsenal at home. Of course, the first game though of the season is against Leicester. I'm going to get straight into the game. We're still scouting a couple of potential transferred play or players I want to transfer in. A lot of them being centre backs because as you can see, we've got 80s pretty much across the board except for the centre back partnership Aguilar we bought last season. And we do have other younger right backs like Kyle Walker Peters that might eventually get up into the 80s. So I feel like I definitely want to go for a high quality centre back. That's my priority at the moment when it comes to transfers. But I'm still very happy with how the team looks. I feel like we are in a pretty good spot to maybe go on and try to qualify for uh, top... I think last season was we just had too good of a run to end it and we ended up amazingly in the top four. I think if, if we manage to do it again, it may not seem like as impressive of a feat, but I still think it will be just as impressive. Even if we do bring in... Even though we do have some pretty big names in now, like Martial, for example, and a few others, we did have... Of course, Parades, but uh, he's gone and got himself injured before the start of the season for two months, which is not great. So we're basically going to have to miss him for a little bit. This now means I've got Fernando starting at centre defensive mid with Neves and Matinho up forward. And that is almost the exact same centre midfield partnership that we were rocking with. Fernando and CDM instead of Den Donker now, but he will still be fantastic for us. The same back four, the front three. It's almost the same except for Martial starting up forward. I've got Jimenez on the bench if we need him, but I'm sure Martial will do the job. It's a brand new season. What does it have in store? Just before we get things started, everybody, I want to let you know that this video was brought to you by OneFootball. OneFootball is a football app that gives you all the latest information on both iOS and Android. It comes in multiple different languages and it gives you information from all across the world of football. It's got all the latest football news, live updates, scores, lineups and transfer news and all things like that. And one of the sickest and coolest features of the app is the augmented reality lineups feature. You can see team lineups, player stats, player information and all that in augmented reality and it's actually insane. It is actually a brilliant app to get if you're a football fan and you want to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. So if you do want to check out OneFootball, then be sure to click the link in the description down below. And thank you once again to OneFootball for sponsoring this video. A little bit of a rainy day to start off the Premier League season for uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers and Leicester City, but hopefully it won't be no bother. I don't think it's too unfair to say that we probably start the season, I would imagine, with a bit of a target on our backs. We were a little bit of a Leicester City story last season. We didn't go on and win the whole thing, but we had a bloody good run that got us all the way up into Champions League. Looking at Leicester City's team too as well, they've got probably a 4-2-3-1. Yep, going at the moment. Their back four looks pretty similar. Evans and Maguire, that's a tough centre-back partnership. King starting up forward. Madison in behind. Herman, I believe they signed him last season. They have gone through a little bit of a shake-up, even as early as last season, but the new Premier League season is underway. They immediately cross the ball in. Ruben Vezo has cleared that brilliantly. Martial with a little tap down. That's a heavy hit, but it's fine. Adama can run onto it. Fernando now, and I tell you what, we have numbers. We just need to work it well. We need to work it well here. Neves to the left. This could be the first attack, and it could be... Oh, what a brilliant challenge from Evans to deny us the first goal. All right, good work. We've really got some space for Agawa to move this ball forward. And as we move it into the middle here, Giamatinho slipped one ball in there. And it could be, it is going to be, Ruben Neves. He gets the first goal of the season. You beauty. Look at that. I just saw the gap and I saw Matinho making his move. Slips a little ball in to Neves and a little toe poke from Neves to beat the keeper at the near post. I was worried this was going to get saved, but I think he's just placed it. Well, it had to be perfect to squeeze in there. We had been coming. We had been. Leicester had been threatening too, but bloody Johnny Evans had just been everywhere for them. Just cleaning up everything for Leicester. Finally, he couldn't stop that one. Yeah, come on, guys. We've got to stick with him better than this. Herman, cut back. What a fucking hit from King. Oh, my God. That is ridiculous. We let him get through over the back. And sheesh, no one's, no one's even close to blocking that one. All my centre-backs are pushed so far across to the left. That's fucking unbelievable. All right, well, simple as we just got caught on a counter-attack. They cut it back in when they shoot it like that. I'm not going to have a go at my keeper for not stopping it. I mean, that's just unstoppable. That is really unstoppable. Well, Fernando nearly, he did come up with it. He nearly gave it away with a poor one. Now we give it away with a poor one. Adama's pass is put behind him. Let's the centre-back get ahead as... 
Fucking Martial has to come back. Anthony Martial, I'm not sure if he touched the ball in that half. That is bizarre. I'm almost starting to think... I'm playing him at striker because I want him to be in as important a position as possible with him being such a high rating. I almost think maybe it's better to have him out on the left-hand side. But so far, it's been a very good game. I scored a nice goal. They scored a... It was a really good finish from King. So, it's a good game so far. A oh, great tackle! Fuck me! He didn't even get the ball at all! Crossed in, Bolly. I'm trying to maybe do a little too much with this here, but all right, we're finally away. And it's actually really good. Martial maybe can actually influence the play here a bit. Gets it to Neves. Big slide tackle. Fuck me, they're defending well. But Adama, that's not a... Mm, should have played it over the top. I can't believe I'm not getting more chances in this game right now. Good ball. Ruben Vezo just does what he can. Gets it out for a corner. And this is proven to be quite the game, I've got to be honest with you. We'll make the change here. Yeah. Matinho's been good, but we'll bring on Yassine Adli. I think while Paredes is injured, you'll be seeing him a little bit more often as well. He's a big, tall man too as well, so I probably should have gotten him in the box, but it's... Patricio has come out, and he's not done what has happened there. He's come out to punch it. He's not got there. Evans leaps over and wins the header. He was fucking sublime today. And now, he has put them in front. This has to go down as Rui Patricio's mistake. And I promise you, I didn't bring him out here. He came out to punch it, and in the end, he didn't do shit. He didn't even jump. He didn't even try to punch it. He just came running out and did nothing. It's been a really, really tough back and forth game. I'd been enjoying the battle, but now they've taken the lead like that, and I'm fucking pissed off. I don't feel like I deserve to be down right now. That is unbelievable. All right, Martial's won it back, though, in a good spot. This could be big for us. I'm thinking about the cross. I'm going to go for it. That! Oh my god, it's an O-goal! Oh, it's a shocking O-goal for Leicester! This game has been ridiculous, but it's actually worked out in our favour this time. A cross in which, to be honest, probably wasn't the right result. But that is a shocking attempt at a clearance and Schmeichel is left alone on an island. Nothing he can do about that. I, I cannot I cannot believe what I've seen. This game really has been a disgrace. It's been FIFA 19 at its fucking worst. But at least now, it's gone in my favour. I feel like it's justice as well. They scored a pretty fucked up goal. I get a pretty fucked up goal. And now it's back at 2-2. Out the left hand side, now Adama. You've played it straight to Gray! And it's blocked. Oh, look at where it goes though! And it's a massive gap up the middle. No one's going to him. Maybe now though. Oh, it's gone through his legs. Oh, Patricio makes a save. God, the, I can't handle this game right now. Islam Slomani just came on for Leicester, and now we are bringing on a former Leicester player of our own. It's Daniel Amati coming on for Fernando. Wow. Will he have his say in this game as well? Gosh, wouldn't that be something? It's crossed in. Dangerous at the near post. Slomani. Patricio had to make a save there. I don't believe it with how tight an angle that was. Here they come again. Close them down. Gray. Aguilar. Oh, the tackle by Aguilar after... Oh, it still ends up with him. Aguilar now again. We have to go quick. We might not have enough time. Three minutes to stop his time. Adama, just go. Just go, Adama, just go. Could I whip in across? Oh, I can see back post here. The move's being made, but that's nowhere near deep enough. I put almost all the power I possibly could have on that. It gets away from Amati, and it's going to end 2-2. What a fucking game. It was end-to-end -end stuff. It was back and forth. I don't think either side really deserved to win more than the other. There was some fucking shenanigans and some serious bullshit. What a game of FIFA, and it ends 2-2. Just a draw to start our Premier League season. Oh, holy shit. If every game is like that for the rest of this season, I think I'm going to fucking have a heart attack or something. I don't think I can live with that. Well, we advance ahead to the next Premier League game. Of course, still scouting some centre-backs. A loan offer for Weyer. Not even going to listen to that because he is still definitely going to get games for me. Don't you worry. I will be rotating. We'll do a little bit more player training as well. A transfer offer for Burgoyne. He's a goalkeeper that's getting on a bit. We'll let him go. I've been working on Yassine Natalie's defending for a little bit just because if he's going to be centre midfield, I want him well-rounded in everything. So I wanted to get him up to 60. Besides, you saw the ball. I think you may have seen it go through his legs right toward the end of the game. If they'd gotten a goal like that, I'd have been furious. So I've just been training him up a bit. He gets an A rating. I'll swap up his drills probably now, though. He's up to 73. We'll train something else. The next game is against Newcastle. It's a home game. I'll probably give it a little quick sim because there's another big game coming up against 
Arsenal. I want to, or sorry, Liverpool. I think we're going to play that game, and then we'll probably end it. I would say on deadline day. Still without Paredes, as we play Fernando in his place. It's the main starting eleven aside from him, and it is a three-one victory and a red card. Wow, to Hayden, that definitely didn't help things out for, or that definitely helped us out, but definitely didn't do good things for Newcastle. A little bit more player training, and once again, we have three players going up and overall. These lads are flying. Charpentier was 64 at the beginning of the season, and now he's 67. We're not even out of August yet, and Ampadu is maybe about to hit and cross over to 70. But yes, the next game we have coming up is against Liverpool, and maybe if we win that one, we'll go up to seven points. There's a chance we might maybe go top, and we also have a game off, crying out loud, uh, a game against Wigan in the uh, Carabao Cup that just popped up as well. After we finish up this game, I'm probably going to uh, look at maybe signing my new star centre-back as well, or my new 80 hopefully plus overall centre back because I'm still scouting quite a fair few of them. I've added a few more names into my shortlist and I just want to have information on everyone before I make my decision. But again, I'll rock with the same team that I did in the Leicester City game. We've gotten a win against Newcastle, so still undefeated technically. And we last played Liverpool on the final day of the Premier League last season. We ended their title hopes, even as slim as it was for them. And we also managed to jump above them and go third while they finished in fourth. They we're all still playing Champions League, though, but it was a nice little... Uh, we, we definitely got one up over them, or maybe even two or three over them. We did very, very well. I reckon they'll probably want some revenge, but hopefully we can repeat the exact same result. G'day, Liverpool. Remember us? We're back at Anfield, hopefully for uh, another successful trip out. We will see. I can't help but notice that Loris Karius is starting for uh, Liverpool today. He was obviously come back from loan after... I think he's on loan to Besik Das, but either way, the front three is the same. The midfield is very different, though. Coates is in. They've got uh, Shivarella and uh, Gruwich starting for them in centre midfield. And Karius in goal. I think... Have we reverted back to the banter era of Liverpool now? I swear, I... I probably shouldn't talk just yet because we haven't finished the game yet, but uh, we are underway in this one. I don't know how that we haven't turned it over just yet. So many intricate passes. I think Martial is offside. Yeah, he is as well. Anthony Martial. I don't want to. I don't want to get too worried just yet, but he's not. I. Oh, he's not good. He's not doing it for me. I barely got him the ball in the Leicester game, and just. Oh. Just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to get concerned. I'm sure he'll come good eventually, but sheesh. That's a good cross back post. I'm trying to get someone in front. Salah, the header. Salah beats him there as well, immediately reacting back to it. wan -Bissaka, we couldn't pick it off. wan -Bissaka crosses it in again. Headed away by Aguilar. Adama, it goes down. Ah, oh, Salah, they get it back again. Adama picked off Fernando, and they get it back again. Fuck me. When do I get the ball? Can I please get the ball? Oh my god, apparently I'm going to get a red card. What happened? What happened there is what, what, I need to see the replay. I was going, all right. I thought I went a lot earlier to ground than that. I was legitimately trying to win the ball. I'm going to have to make sure things are nice and calm now, but what a fucking time to lose a player in the first 15 minutes. I've been very agitated. I've just never been able to get the ball back off the... I go to press B to tackle, they clear. This is the game I'm having. It's so fucked right now. Oh, that could have been better. But it'll still get to Martial anyway. Come on, you bloody beauty. Anthony Martial with his first goal for his new club against Liverpool. Ain't that familiar? We cut it back. Adama, the strike, that really was so close to Karius, but he wasn't going to do anything about that. We hit it hard, even if it was straight down the middle. We have just had none of the ball. Every time we go in for a tackle, it bounces back to them. We have not been able to just retain possession. It's been so tough, but we finally find our way forward, and Martial is there to tap it in and get his first goal. Can we clear this? I'm smashing B. That is such a fucking shit goal! I am smashing, but you can probably hear it as well. I'm just begging them, clear it, clear it, but they keep taking touches before they whack it away. We don't get rid of it quick enough, and they get an easy and a really shit goal. It's at like this point here, I'm like pressing B, Adama re stretches for it, doesn't have time to clear it, and they just swarm on you like a bunch of fucking seagulls so quickly, chasing after a chip, they just get to the ball so much faster. They react so much quicker, and by the time they've got the ball, they'll set themselves up in the blink of an eye for a goal. 
All right, we did so well to get in front, being down to 10 men, and then we just let a shit one in like that. That's really not good enough. Fuck me, boys. You gotta be so much quicker and so much faster. God, it is so much fucking harder to find a way in without that center defensive midfielder, that other central midfielder to help. But we maybe we'll find a way here. Maybe with Joe Martino. Drags a shot really far wide there. I think he had Gruwich maybe putting him off. I'm not sure, but it's 1 1. I mean, we're still tied with him, and we are down to 10 men, and we have been for the majority of the first half, so maybe it's not all bad, but it's a shit one to give up. All right, Martial gets us kicked off again. Second half underway, still down to 10 men. I'm still going to try to manage. Yes, got it. Got it, you beauty! We just have to get him in that scenario all the time because the fullback will always push up to close down the man on the ball and whoever is uh, to the left of them, like, look at this. We get it to Matinho there, that fullback, Wan-Bissaka. In that situation, they will always come to close down the man on the ball. That means they'll always leave whoever's left of them free. In this occasion, it is Johnny and he gets his first goal of the Premier League season. Back up in front, you beauty, Matinho gets the assist as well. We've been down to 10 men for so long, yet we are still somehow back in front. Aguilar, we're really pushing numbers up forward here, aren't we? When we've only got 10 men on the pitch. I've got to remember that. I tried the cheeky pass. Cut off, though. And now Firmino is going to send him away. You know you saw that coming. Salah, he's going to get there. Is Johnny going to hold him to it? Yes, he... No, he's not. Ruben Vezo, I thought was going to get there. We've double teamed them. The cross will concede the corner there. That's fine. I'm going ultra defensive for the next 10 minutes. I'm going to try to hang on to what we've got. Johnny with the header away will concede possession again, but that's fine. Roberto Firmino with a cheeky pass. You know, I'm trying to close down whoever's on the ball. I'm trying to switch back. Taking a long time to get in front here. Can we clear this? Yes, we do with Bolly. Two minutes of stoppage time. No one's there to close down Kaita. Diogo shots are running back. Why just spin back that way, mate? A big save by Patricio. I don't know what my players are doing half the fucking time. I'm pretty sure sometimes they end up turning the complete opposite direction I want them to go. Five massive saves today for by Rui Patricio. Whack this up forward if you can. Bolly, please, I'm spamming B. They get it out, and we get out of the... I can't believe it. We're getting out of Liverpool with three points when we were down to 10 men in the first 15 in a challenge I didn't even expect to lose a player for until I saw the red card. I don't believe it. We've beaten Liverpool again in a much tenser game this time, but the first three points I've been able to pick up this season, and we're up to seven out of nine to start the season. What a start. You know, I can't help but notice either, but every game that I've played so far, I have not been the better side, I would say. I think in the Leicester game, it was like maybe 51% Leicester control and then 49% me. I, I just maybe would slightly give it to Leicester. In that Liverpool game, I, was, I definitely was not the better side, for sure. Yet somehow, somehow, I managed to win it. These games have gone back to me being on ultimate difficulty. These games have really gone back to being an actual grind, a battle, a really tough affair. I am genuinely struggling to get these wins. It is tricky. On my little run toward the end of the season where I went undefeated for the longest time ever, I was genuinely like thinking, man, this is just unbelievable. I'm dispatching these teams on ultimate difficulty with ease. I felt like I could have won games by so much more than I did. And sometimes I was even taking it easier on the opposition almost to think, geez, if I win by too much, people are going to think this isn't even ultimate difficulty. But anyway, we will move on to the next game in the Carabao Cup, Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Wigan. I'm hoping not to get dumped out straight away. I am playing a little rotated team. It's nothing too crazy, though. We are the home side. It's a draw, and we get it done on penalties. Thank the Lord. All right, we're still in the Carabao Cup. I just We've already played two games today. We're still in the, we're still in the transfer window. Just wanted to get it done. I also can't help but notice that Yander Groot, the, the mystery scouted future star that I just ended up getting once I loaded it up one day, I ended up seeing that a scout was dispatched, and he came up with Yander Groot, the guy that we crowned as the next David Beckham because of his amazing free kick stats and uh, crossing and long passing and passing ability, but then it turned out that those were only his potentials. And I'm still going to keep an eye on him and see how he develops, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a disappointment that his stats didn't end up anywhere close to what they were advertised as in the Youth Academy, but now I know that's just his potential stats. And even if he can get up there, that'd be amazing. But yeah, he's a, a right footer with one star weak foot, but thankfully he's a right winger with a right foot, so maybe it's okay, but one star weak foot, it's... It's just a, it's such a shame that he had to end up as a Todoroki. And uh, for any of you that don't 
understand that reference. The reason we call him a Todoroki is because in battle, he never uses his left. But advancing forward to this game against Arsenal, the uh, we'll leave it in deadline day with that game to be played against Arsenal, but we will still do a little bit of transfer business before we end things here today. The first thing, for example, will be we'll accept yet another offer for Burgoyne. I'm trying to ship him off. Hopefully, he will eventually get sold. And the other bit of business is I'm going to go for a centre-back. Of course, we've been scouting a couple because I wanted to get one that was at least 80 rates or higher. We've got a Kanji from Dortmund. We've got, of course, Pavard, who everyone should know about since he was one of the... Uh, Integral plays in the French team at the World Cup scored that amazing goal, which could have won the push gas. Either him or maybe Ronaldo or Bale's goal should have been Riley McGree's his scorpion kick. We all know that. But instead, basically any goal, it's even Messi's, any goal except for that fucking Salah one, seriously. But anyway, we've got Milan Skrinar as well, who I, I maybe, I might almost can think about, to be honest with you. Upa Meccano, who's only 78 but 20 years of age, so maybe it's not that bad. Lascelles at 80 overall, and then Kurt Zuma at 80 overall as well. And I'm, I'm just going to genuinely go through all these player stats and decide who I think is best. To be honest with you, lads, I, I am genuinely thinking about going big for Skrinar here, but the fact is that he has like a very high value. And look, I, I kind of want to maybe... I, I, I want to open... If, if I'm going to make a really big, huge, splash the cash signing that's going to be worth 78 between the ranges of 75 mil to 110 mil, I'd rather it not be on a centre back. I've got to be totally honest with you. If I'm going to spend that type of money, I want it to be on a midfielder or an attacker, or a goal, uh, maybe not even a goalkeeper. To be fair, I want it to be someone that's like integral to build up play and finishing. Someone with elite stats as a midfielder or an attacker. So maybe I won't go for Skriniar, but I will probably go after looking at all the players, all the options for the next highest rated and the World Cup winner in Benjamin Pavard. Or oh, hold on a second, this player is currently available online. Oh, you're joking. So if I go to approach the buys, oh, I can't believe it. I really wanted to get Pavard as well because I love the fact that he can play center back, right back, and even CDM if we need to push him a little higher up. Those players that can play uh, multiple different positions, but oh, that's a real disappointment. So Pavard is not going to happen for us. He's on loan for crying out loud to Frankfurt. All right, look, I tell you what, I didn't want to go for him because I thought he'd just be costing way too much for a high-quality centre-back, especially, I don't know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for him. I don't. If I have to spend any more than 70 mil or 80 mil, I, I don't think I'm going to go for it. And if not, then maybe I'll, I'll have to choose between Akanji, Upamecano, Lascelles, Zuma. I'll be honest, I'm thinking Manuel Akanji. I think Akanji would be, if we can't get Skrinar for a decent amount, Akanji's the next one on the list. I'm still going to give it a go, though. We're still going to try from Land Skrinar if we can pick him up. I am just going to offer his his base value, exactly what he's worth, 60 mil. We'll see what they counter offer for. If they counter offer for something in the 100 mil, which I'd be surprised if they did, not going to happen. 90 mil, probably not. 80 mil, maybe we can make something happen, I think. It, it has to be at least 80 or less. And that's what I, <laughs> I was worried about. 109 million for that fucking... 24-year-old, 86-rated center back. He's going to be pricey. I'm proposing a new transfer fee. I'm going to bring it down to what I was basically prepared to pay for him, just around about 80 mil. We'll have it at that. I don't think... I, I'm not going to pay like 90 million if that's what they want out of me for a center back. I just don't want to do that. See, they barely they barely brought it down to 102. I, I don't want to pay that much. I'm not paying that much for a center back. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. It's not going to happen, you know. I want. I've got. I've only got the budget that I've got, and I'm still thinking and planning on using that money on other players. I don't want to give anything away just yet, but I'm genuinely thinking of something. I've also just realised too. I've got other centre backs in my shortlist too that I can completely forgotten about, like Foyth and Mawson. I'm. I'm probably not looking at anymore. But Mukile is another player that I remember when I signed him. He was uh, one of the players that I was kind of thinking of maybe picking up as well. I wanted to go for him straight away, but he wasn't available. Is he available now? I believe he is, and he cost me about 20 to 25 million. So I'm thinking either him or Akanji, and the fact that Mukile is so much younger as well and can play it both right back as well, I, I'm starting to change my mind really quickly. Akanji's probably going to cost me something like 40 million, whereas it looks like Mukile is going to cost me like 27 or 25 million. I have just completely shifted gears, haven't I? I'm going to go for him. Naughty Makile. You all thought I was going for a kanji, and then he just popped back up in my shortlist, and I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot about him. He actually looks like he could be the one. And again, you know me. I have a soft spot for players that can play multiple different positions. We'll start things off 
at 17 million. I'm hoping to get him for about 25. They counter off for 25.5, but a 5% selling clause. I'm happy to keep the 5% selling clause, but maybe we'll bring the transfer sum down to like 2021. Because I don't want to jeopardize the deal that much, we'll make it 21.5. I'm saving a couple mil. You get a little something, I get a little something. I get Naughty McKeelay though. You're gonna have to do better than that. And then I think the fucker up, he, he increased his price, didn't he? he? He put it up another 100 grand. You fuck with. Oh, hell no, bitch. Absolutely not. 22.5. You don't accept that, and we've got a bit of a problem. What are you gonna do, motherfucker? You don't know how petty I can get if you don't accept that. Okay, okay, at least we're getting somewhere. I'm gonna counter off for 23 million, and if you don't accept that, mmm, things, things will happen. Come on, motherfucker, why are we still here? Why are we still here? I'm letting you have your 5%, 23 mil. Just take the money. He's done it. We've got a deal. All right, then, Mukile is going to be joining Wolverhampton Wanderers, hopefully. We'll sort out the contract. He wants a slight increase to his wage, signing bonus about 400 grand, and then an appearance bonus. That's all gonna work fine for me. Just made some minor alterations to things like the bonuses and the appearances and stuff like that, but I'm sure they're gonna go for it. Not quite what my client was after, but it is done, and that is the maybe not big, big name center back signing that I was going for, but at least now we have got a center back that's of the exact same quality of my current center back partnership anyway, but way younger and with a seriously high potential. My apologies to any Akanji fans watching, but we are going to go and put Mukile in at center back. He's a very pacey, very quick center back with nice ball control. The passing is there. The defending stats are all there. We'll continue to train him up and hell, we could even move him out to the right hand side if we need him as well. This now means that Bolly is now going to become my substitute centre back. And uh, as for Dale Fry, unfortunately for him, he's going to have to go down to the reserves. But don't worry, he's still going to eventually surpass Bolly, I'm sure. As I'm also sure Ampadu is going to do as well. And it also appears that the Champions League group draw happened right underneath our noses. We must have missed it, but Atletico Madrid, Lokomotiv Moscow and Fenerbahce. That is our group in the Champions League. We can surely get out of that. It also looks as though the first game of our Champions League campaign will be on the 18th of September. That's a couple of weeks away and about two more games in between now and then. The Arsenal game and this Crystal Palace game. So it's coming very, very soon. Oh boys, it's getting real now, isn't it? We have our group, our team is really starting to take shape and it might still be changed around a little bit in deadline day. We've got this game against Arsenal to play. Once we finish that, Maybe some more signings to be made. You'll find out in the next episode. But until then, my name is The Master Bucks. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. And have a good one.